kicked off yesterday, right? Yeah. So what are your expectations? For today? For the tour? For, for the tour? Well. Are you out till is it the end of April? Is it, yes. Does it go into it's, May too? Or no, 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 it's, it's okay. 27. Okay. We end again, again in New York. So. Okay. But, you know, we're, we're playing some of the same cities that... We or at least some of the guys played on, on the yeah, last tour, <laughs> um, and of course it's nice to see if, if things evolve in those cities. Uh, and then we're playing some places we haven't been before, or where we played like a couple of years ago. Okay. So of course it's really interesting for us to see how how that goes. You know, yeah. is anybody gonna come out to the shows, <laughs> or are we just gonna play for ourselves and the support band? I doubt it. Not, yeah, <laughs> we doubt it as well. But you know, there's some places where. But so I guess it's not going that fast, but okay. most places it's really good. But it is that's interesting to see how many people would actually come out. Yeah, so. yeah and, and, and about the tours, just always we're curious to see how it's actually is there as well. Those many people who could sing along on all their tunes and all that. It was kind of. That's crazy. <laughs> they know the music. Oh, yeah. I mean, once the fans <laughs> latch onto it, like, even if they picked it up just based on your latest release, they will go back and get the entire catalog yeah, and yeah. have it all memorized. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so is there any area of the country you're looking forward to visiting? Anywhere where the fans are crazier, maybe? <laughs> no, but I remember here last time it was really... Philly, Philly's <laughs> a rough crowd. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a, that's, there's something there. It was really good. That's good. But I don't know if there's specific one place. That, no. Of course, you know, always good to come down and get some sun and warm. <laughs> yeah, not here. <laughs> no, no, it, was, it was really cold in New, in New York yesterday. Mm. And the same here. Or something, so was raining, snowing here? So. They said so. I didn't yeah. see any. I don't want to see any. So, so some sun? Nice. But but that's just that's just us like you know that's got nothing to do with the shows. Right? No no, it's just, it's just nicer. <laughs> so so what I love so much about your music is that it it can't be boxed like it doesn't seem like it fits one particular genre. It's like a little bit of everything thrown in, and I think that's what attracts a lot of listeners to it. Mm -hmm. is because it's something different, finally, rather than, like, all that cookie-cutter metal music that that you get. I mean, how how's the recording process or writing process? Like, who brings what influence to the table? Well, the whole writing of, of, of the things, is, that's basically Michael's yeah. head, uh, you know. Um, I'd say he writes, I don't know, 95 or 98. Percent of, of the things, and then we kind of just yeah. But but, but of the course, the process is you know writing a song is not necessarily sitting down and write everything that's happening. Mm -hmm. uh, so sometimes Michael comes up with like almost a full blown idea, and he got ideas for how, what should the drums do, what should maybe even the bass and the yeah, guitar some, do. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's just you know. <coughs> I remember when when he came up with sixteen dollars. Yeah. Uh, it was like something he came up with on his way from home to the rehearsal room one day, um. you know. So, so the idea is only it could be cool to do mm. something like this, and he has to find the chords, and we kind of jam it. Um, and sometimes, you know, sometimes we jam something that's that's not really existing yet, but just a few chords mm. or something. So it's a little bit different, but but you know, everything goes through through Michael, and he writes all the mm. lyrics and all all the melodies and all that stuff. So. It's kind of his universe so. with stories <laughs> and chapters he's going uh. and different <laughs> records, so it's, yeah. And then re recording is, you know, that's that's <laughs> just recording. That's, you know, we show up the first day, <laughs> plug <laughs> in, mic all the drums, play everything, <laughs> and then we're done. You know? the time it's, then uh, <laughs> it's, there's not, not much special to that. Um, a lot of, like just hard work of getting stuff done that is already fixed we, we, we kind of like the like the basic arrangement and everything is, is done we, we do a lot of rehearsing before we hit the studio okay. but then of course leave something open like it's like when you when you cook food that you know you know the recipes you know the ingredients but you know then when you might get an idea adding some extra spices here and there to 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 kind of make everything a little bit more interesting oh, that's that what we sense. spent maybe the last week or the last couple of days or whatever on if we got time you know try to if there is there a song that would 
and I'm, I'm especially talking guitar here, but, but like, would it would it be cool to to kind of add an, an extra guitar that sounds a little bit different from everything else, like if if it fits the song. Um, so that's a, that's basically the process. Like, I don't know, a couple of weeks that is just laying down tracks, and then maybe one week or something, trying to to make everything more interesting than just having the songs. So did you ever s expect that, you know, Beyond Hell Above Heaven would do as well as it has? I mean, initially, did you yeah. try anything different with the recording process? Cause it came out back in December, right? Yeah, yeah I, there's only one thing maybe. <laughs> the, like, have an, um, this is a Swedish guy who mastered a little oh, at, yeah. at the end. Yeah. And we haven't tried that before. So it's, of course, Jakob <laughs> Hansen, who's done all the records in his studio, but then we have a guy in the end to do, you know, just adjust a little bit. So it yeah. sounds a little bit more Swedish. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> no, but I don't know. It's always hard when, when, when you write an album and you record it and then, you know, how will this do? You know, we changed to a major label. Of course, that's like, sometimes that helps a band, sometimes it yeah. doesn't. It, it seemed to help us. Uh, maybe because we didn't write a major label album. You know, we just did what we felt was natural, you know, it it, yeah. But, yeah. it, it, it wasn't really, you can, you can actually say that Guitar Gangsters and Cadillac Blood might was our, like, that was, that could have been a major label debut album because it, it got, like, more, at least some people say it got a little bit more mainstream or something, mm -hmm. but we tried to do, to, to challenge ourselves and, and, and the fans a little bit by, by trying to go, going somewhere. Um, but it's hard when you're in the process of writing and you're in the process of recording to think about what is the, how's this going to be as an album because you're basically working on the songs and you're in this creative process where nothing's set before you're done recording nothing's set you know and even after that you can still change a lot of stuff by, by turning the knots so when we exit the studio you know we still got an ongoing creative process running in our heads and we got to like leave the CDs and, for a month or something and not listen to it and then pick it up again and try to listen to it it's as like an, fresh as an album. ears yeah. 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 yeah but you know it's like a process and then suddenly it's a product uh -huh. or it's an album or whatever you want to call it um and it, and it's hard to to have any idea but i remember that you know we normally have some some friends dropping by some journalists as well when we're in the studio and we want to play some of the songs that i have finished you know you know and some of the songs you're just sitting there listening to a, a full song instead of just like instead of working on it you sit there and you listen to it drink a cup of coffee and some some of the songs you look at each other and you get goosebumps and you're like smiling and nodding your head and it's like all right we got it you know? yeah it's done but, that, but, but, but that, that's <laughs> how so, yeah. Yeah. But, but but that's that's happening while we're in the studio so it's, it's hard to to say like it's not a full blown this is how we got a, a, a good idea about what what is the album going to be. We we got the songs and all that, but but you never know exactly where it's going to end before it's done. So, how much of a challenge was it to you know bring things stateside? I know you guys have pretty much made a mark overseas, you know, and obviously this this album too was number one in Europe, too. Am I correct? Yeah, yeah it's kind of yeah, yeah. sold a lot of copies. Was there any challenge to bring things stateside or hope that, you know, the U.S. audiences would embrace it the same way? Well, it's the same album, you know, and we, <laughs> we pretty much do the same show that we do, you know. This time we actually ask fans to get back to us about which songs we should play. Not that, you, oh. not, not that they get to decide the full <laughs> set, but at least get an idea of what is it, what is it people cool, want to hear. Because, you know, we know that, that the new albums sold, like, not not extremely well, but it, it's it's sold some copies, and the other ones has been hard to get because it's it's a small European independent label. Mm -hmm. So it's like how many do people actually get the old albums? Do they want to hear it? And then uh, <coughs> by, by 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 people getting back to us, we saw that that actually yeah, people got it, and people want to hear the old songs. So it's, so we're pretty home safe. We just gotta blend all four albums and play yeah. a little bit of everything. Yeah. Um, a ghost. But the challenge, I think, it's more like. It's 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 more on the touring side of it. It's it's yeah. That's 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 the part of yeah being in a bus and going on tour. 
Just, you know, we, yeah. don't, we normally do shorter tours in Europe, you know, okay. do three weeks, then go back home for a couple of weeks and then do another three weeks. I mean, now we do like six weeks in a row, you know, that's that's a challenge. So how well, do you, now, now how you pass the time? <laughs> well, what we do yeah. here, like people are checking out. Have an iPhone or laptop, <laughs> Some, somebody got to gotta keep yeah. the internet going. <laughs> No, but then we then we take a walk around the city and see if, if you know sometimes even go out if there's anything like interesting to see. But it's always like an hour or two at a time, mm -hmm. so it's hard to do anything. Uh, watch some movies, hang out. Yeah. Well, now it's the second day of, of the tour. Yeah. But it's like. Uh, well, still we have some little jet lag. Still. Some records, kind of, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what are the plans for after this tour? We got a month off and then it's it's summer festival. The festival in, uh, in okay. Europe. Yeah. In Europe. And then we're looking into right now we're looking into when we when we're going back to the States and hope we we're gonna be able to do that in summer or in fall. But you know, there's Let's see. Yeah. Nothing's nothing's <laughs> set yet. But, uh, so, uh, you know, just curious, what was the music scene like for you guys growing up? Like, <coughs> there are some early influences. What made you want to pick up instruments and say, I'm going to be in a band? <laughs> yeah, for me, it was, you know, it's at school. So it's just sort of drum kit, you know, and I had to play that. So I actually started playing drums. And then my friend, he got a band where he played the guitar. His, fr his friend was playing the drums, so I had to play the bass. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how it started for me, and, uh, yeah. I've been doing it since I was 13, so wow. that's 24 years now. Wow. Playing bass. <laughs> so. yeah, as, a kid, as a kid, you find instruments interesting. Yeah, I don't you know, know, there's something, you know. And then there's this thing, that that you, know, you know you can do a lot of stuff with it, but you don't know how to, and you're like playing. I remember, I, I saw a picture of myself, like playing an acoustic guitar with like an upright bass because it was so small. <laughs> it was um, bigger than you were. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> But, but, then, but then I think, you know, during your teenage years, and if you, if you learn a little bit about how to play an instrument, for me, I remember, like... Playing for your parents or your friends? No, but, but all, 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 I think that, you know, <laughs> sometimes with, with MTV and all that shit going on, and for me in, in, in the 90s, was, like, bands like Nirvana and Green Day and Offspring and stuff like that coming on on the air and seeing that, you know, you could actually write some really cool music only with only three chords. Yeah. Um, and, and, and that whole idea that you didn't have to be the most talented guitar player in town to actually write cool music. Um, no, they love Green Day for that and bash Green Day for that. So. <laughs> you know, but yeah, you know, when those guys came out or when Kurt Cobain and the guys came out, mm -hmm. you know, all, all the, the, the really talented guitar players get, they kind of got unemployed, you know. <laughs> it wasn't needed for, for a decade or something. That's but true. you know, that was, that was like, you, know, you could actually do it yourself. You could actually play those songs and you could actually do it. But for me, that was, that was a huge thing that, you know, that it's not necessarily just about sitting back home and playing guitar. You can actually form a band with your friends, you know, and you can actually write songs and you can actually play shows. I it, it, actually, I remember when I was quite young, I saw on TV a band called Europe. They have a big hit called The Final Countdown. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I saw that concert live, yeah. you know, with oh, wow. you know, okay. 40,000 people. And I remember that. That's really, I want to do that. I want to try that. Kind of. And stick on to it, you know. Playing, 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 and just, you know. Nice. Yeah. So, how do you feel about the music industry in general? I mean, with things being so much like a singles market, and you know, it's yeah, you yeah know, more I and too. more. There's no videos on MTV. <laughs> yeah. I want them to come back, but yeah. <laughs> we'll see. Well, you're kind, you're kind of back to the '50s almost. Yeah. That, well, maybe at one point we will be. You know, where, yeah. where you you released a single, you released one song, and then there was a B side. Yep. You know, nowadays actually, as a band, you don't necessarily have to write albums. You no. still do because that's how the industry works. But but you know at one point maybe you you'll actually see bands just releasing one song per month or per second month, which could be interesting to see how how that uh, will work out. But yeah, it's I still like albums because it's 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 less it's more of a full thing, mm -hmm. and it's it, it it challenges you as a band to to maybe write different stuff. You know, if you always have to focus on that song, that gotta gotta on radio and and all that, you know, then then it might's gonna be a little bit boring. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, uh, yeah, 
I think that of course more and more, especially a young kids, they buy it on you know on the net. Yeah. It's, it's that Everything's is the future. Like yeah. iTunes yeah. So, 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 that's how it so it is what it is, but but still, you can sell an album on iTunes. So. Yeah, it's cool, you know. Now yeah. it is with all, all the you, small you just need that and, shops, and a yeah. dock, and then you have, you know, it's easy. I I like it, but of course there's some kind of, you know, with putting on a LP, it's just yeah. It's, it's funny. I was just analyzing. Just I know you guys are picking up with CKY in a little oh. bit, and I just interviewed them today, like this morning, and we were talking about the same thing. And they just released B sides and rarities and. You know, it was based on fan input, and he said, we didn't even know how to go about releasing an album now mm. just because of what the industry wants and, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> whether it should be just all singles or, what you know, yeah, that There's so many thing. different ways to do it, you know. Very true. Ra- Radiohead have <laughs> alternative ways to do it, you know. <laughs> no, but you know, it's, yeah, but it's, it's, kind it's, of, it's you also know. cool with all that, all that internet stuff that, you you know, if you're living somewhere where you don't get a cool record shop, yeah. You know, and nowadays all the small ones are closing down. You got Best Buy and you got yeah. all that stuff, mm-hmm. yeah. which got all like all all the the bigger things, you know. But if you're into like some subgenres and stuff, I think iTunes is great. You know, yeah, you can yeah. actually go yeah. and get everything. You know, no no matter where you are, as long as you got a credit card, a computer, <laughs> and true. an internet connection, <laughs> you can actually get all those things that you sometimes like back in the days you had to you had to Wait. order it. <laughs> uh. like, so get wait for it to come send over and spend right. more spend more money Real sending man. it and taxing than, <laughs> than 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 actually buying the thing. So I think that's that's pretty cool. It makes the whole distribution easier. But of course, the the regular labels are a little bit afraid because it takes some control. Yeah, them. that's true. Yeah. So, being that we're popcultureMadness dot com, is there an area of pop culture that angers or fascinates you in any way? Well, it's a, it's a little bit it's a little bit sad when when and that can be bands and it can be everything else or arts and, and fashion and everything. It's a little bit sad when you see something becoming a trend or a hit or whatever, and then every everybody goes for that. You know, you you see a label releasing. I don't know. Let's say Volbeat, and it Volbeat, Volbeat becomes a huge success. Then every label wants a similar artist. Right. And they sign something that sounds pretty similar. And then uh, it doesn't become so, so, so yeah. everything everything yeah. becomes the same instead instead of like instead of looking into like what 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 trends are, let's go for the trends. It, I, I would like, you know, bands and artists and everybody else to try to go from instead of looking out and see we gotta do what what's happening out there, look inside themselves and do what, what they feel from the inside because that's the most interesting thing you can do. And that's the most interesting place you can you can you can have as a source for your music or your art or your whatever you do. Um, and I think that would that would make the whole spectrum of music more interesting. That's true. And I believe a lot of bands but, do. Yeah, it exactly. Way, of course, there's but, but, uh, millions of bands. <laughs> but there's just a lot of bands that sound the same. Oh, yeah. of course. And that's boring, you know. Yeah, but there's still a, a kind of a you can stretch it. At some point, this the opportunities kind of s- runs out, you know. And that's oh, yeah. why there's a lot of cover and remixes. Well, and yeah, it becomes a marketing f- tool. Futuring, futuring, futuring that, and then yeah. And then when they can't release a second album that sounds the same, then you have a problem. Yeah. <laughs> so, as a just for fun question for you, what is the strangest rumor that you've heard about Volbeat? About us? That's Jon. In Austria, where we had to cancel a concert in... <laughs> was not in Austria? In Holland, Holland. we canceled, the, canceled the, uh, an appearance at a... What was it? Some showcase thing. Okay. And then we heard rumors. People were asking. I was down there anyway. Uh, so people were asking me if it was true that our drama blew up. And that was the reason why we couldn't play. We, we, we couldn't play. <laughs> he was uh, like, yeah. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> what? You know. You know. Wow. So that's, okay. Wow. That's, that's kind of a cool rumor. Yeah, that <laughs> is. That's that's craziness. <laughs> So, how is it for you as an artist when a fan will come up and say that your music's affected them in some way or helped them through a, a certain situation? It's just that that's kind of why you do it, you mm-hmm. know. I think that that's that you can give people something because they give something back, and yeah, I think that's yeah, 
what it's about at some point. But of course, it depends on what music you write. <laughs> True. Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if your music could be the soundtrack to any movie, what would you choose and why? Oh. It would have to be your favorite <laughs> <laughs> guy of the movie. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's a uh, difficult question. Yeah. Yep, usually. <laughs> because maybe it should be ten movies mixed together. Yeah. Uh, scenes. <laughs> It'll be like the super <laughs> <Yeah>. movie. <laughs> the scene per Probably song or something. Some kind of grindhouse. Movie. Yeah. <laughs> that would work. <laughs> <laughs> so what is the best way for fans to keep up to date? Are you guys very active on Twitter and Facebook and all that, I'm sure? Uh, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> It, it yeah. really depends, but right now, actually, we got this guy over here. Uh, he's uh, he's with him on, on this tour, doing photos and updating that. Uh, so on on the web page. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Um, so that's pretty cool. So actually, every night people get a bunch of photos from the show. Oh, cool. Pro shots <laughs> <laughs> and the set list and everything. That's 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 pretty yeah. neat. Um, oh, yeah. And we try to do a little bit back and forth, but then again, you know, we're like it's difficult to sit. On it's Facebook hard. It's hard to write stuff. On I don't Twitter even have Facebook, Facebook yeah. if you got nothing to say. You know, right? You know, every day looks the same, and it's like, <laughs> wow, we're still on tour. Yeah. Now we're sitting <laughs> you know? on the bus. Now we're sitting in the backstage. <laughs> now we're doing sound check. Now we eat, and now. You know, it's <laughs> but it's a cool thing, you know. That actually, I, I, people probably don't believe it but you know whenever we post something and and there's like a couple of hundred comments sometime if I got the time I sit down and read them because I think it's fun to see what people like to respond mm -hmm. you know? yeah. and we also got on our webpage there's a link to we got like, like a forum where people can discuss the band and they can ask us questions and everything uh, we won't ask, ask answer two stupid questions, but uh, <laughs> but every once in a while there are are something that is that is actually interesting, and then and, and we get back to people. But again, I try to read it, try to follow what's going on, what does, what the people, what, you know, what what is people discussing about the band. Sometimes you get a little bit freaked out that people no, almost know more about the band than you do. Mm -hmm. um, and when people start discussing yeah, if, you, if you should wear different clothes or some shit or you should, <laughs> you should or your age is yeah, five you know. years older than you really are it's kind of oh, okay wow <laughs> yeah I mean some of the fans are pretty hardcore with that and they dig in and they will yeah. find out everything there is to find out well, <laughs> Well, I definitely want to thank you guys for talking to me today. No. Is there anything I didn't cover in the interview that you would like Probably, to discuss? <laughs> Probably. Sorry, but yeah. we can't cover everything. No, it's, uh, no. Just glad to be here, and yeah, hope it's gonna be a good show tonight. Great. Yeah. Well, Just, we're looking forward to it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah.